I always think that the path of how people got to where they are is fascinating. And today's guest is no different. Starting with bottle caps, then to online marketing and accounting. Wondering how all these things connect together? Well, stay tuned to find out. Welcome to Fox Talks Business Podcast with your host, Tanya Fox. Tanya has been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, owning retail, service, and franchise. She holds no punches and is never afraid to talk about the nitty gritty. Together, you'll explore the good, the bad, and the motivational of business life, turning obstacles into opportunities and failures into successes. So grab your favorite drink and let's have some fun. Here's your host, speaker, crafter, and collaborator, Tanya Fox. Mike Jezoshak is a modern and innovative CPA taking a new age approach to accounting, tax savings, and growing your business. Mike has spent the majority of his career as an entrepreneur. He was CFO and co-founded several companies and has experience in all business stages. He set out on a mission to help businesses that have seen and lived the same experiences that he has in business. And this is how his company Jetro was built. He has been in the shoes of many small business owners out there, and his end goal is to help them in the one area that most business owners are not familiar with, accounting and taxes. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Mike. Yeah, Tanya, thanks for having me. Excited to to share some insights today. Absolutely. So um, for those people who don't know you, tell us a little bit about your background. So how did you come to be where you are right now? Yeah, so I've been an entrepreneur for majority of my life. Um, when I was really young, and this is like eight or nine, my dad, we used to go to these auctions all the time, and he used to sell antiques and things like that. So I would go along with him and, and got into baseball cards and stuff like that. Um, but at one auction, he bought this box of old bottle caps. And so I can't even remember. It was a soda, but I can't remember what it was. It was just bottle caps. And there was probably 10,000 bottle caps in here. And I don't know what enticed him to, to buy these bottle caps, uh, but he ended up coming home, looking on eBay and seeing that these bottle caps are like selling like crazy. And so my job, and this was kind of my introduction to being a business owner and when I really didn't even know what that meant, um, is I would take a hundred bottle caps, put them in plastic baggies, and then we would sell these bottle caps in lots of a hundred. And so that's what I always say kind of maybe got my creative juices going and got me into being um, more in that entrepreneur state. Uh, but my actual real first business was at the age of 15. And that's when I was doing online marketing type stuff. Uh, so I was doing online marketing um, in, in, in that business. I had my own company, ended up selling that a couple of years later. It was a small business, just something to kind of keep me alive and keep me with some funds during college um, and high school. Um, and then I got into a little bit deeper into the online marketing industry. And so I was with a company um, and became a partner of that company. And that company had seven partners. And I main job for me was to help a little bit on the online marketing side, because that's where my background was, but I was also going to school at the time for accounting. And so I helped a lot in the accounting side as well. And this part of the industry was, was pretty unique. And so when, when I was doing the accounting for our company, we struggled to find uh, a CPA, someone that could handle taxes, uh, that really understood the industry how they needed to. And so uh, some things happened and, you know, partners wanted to go into different directions. And at that time when the company was kind of split into different areas, I decided to kind of go full on board with my accounting background and start an accounting firm. And so that was about seven years ago, we started Jetro, which is an accounting firm. And, uh, you know, we focus exclusively on small businesses. And so that was a kind of a unique transition because I went from being more of that business owner to now being an accountant that's helping multiple businesses. So instead of just working on my own business, I, I was in there helping multiple businesses in areas that, you know, I knew business owners uh, kind of need that help. And so it was a little bit different at the front because, you know, the typical accounting route is you get, get your degree, you get your CPA, you work for public accounting or some type of private government type work, something like that. Um, and then eventually you make your way into the private sector. And I took a whole different approach to that. Uh, I went and started my own business and never worked in that public accounting sector. And so 
when I started a public accounting firm, I always say that there was the good thing is that we didn't bring along the baggage that most people get when they get work in public accounting. So working 70 hours a week during tax season, just crazy kind of work environments. I didn't bring along that baggage. Now, the only other problem was I also didn't bring along all the experience you get working right. in public accounting. So the first couple of years of the business was, it was a lot of learning. Um, it was a lot of learning on my end. You know, I knew how to run financials for a company and do tax work and things like that for a company, but to actually run a public accounting type firm for that type of, uh, for, for other businesses was a lot of learning phases for me. So uh, I, I say we, you know, when we're hiring employees and bringing people on, we have that advantage that we're not going to be your typical public accounting firm. Uh, but it was, it was rough at the beginning, kind of having to learn all that ins and outs of, of public accounting. So I know because we had talked a little bit earlier at that, um, I'm familiar with this because this is what I started my career out was in accounting and that's what I wanted to become. And I know whenever anybody, it was like the usual question that comes up was, why on earth did you pick that? So what made you, <laughs> my answer is really stupid and simple, but I want to know what your answer is. What attracted you to this type of a career? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, you know, really when I, when I started the business in when I was 15 in high school, um, I bought the QuickBooks subscription, was doing the QuickBooks. And I just really kind of enjoyed doing that part of the work, even though the business was so simple. It probably could have been done on a couple lines in Excel. Um, right. I bought the Excel just because I kind of or the, bought the QuickBooks just because I really enjoyed that type of work. Um, so that's kind of what geared me towards that accounting route. Now, I never thought that I would own an accounting firm or I want anything to do with an accounting firm. But when I was partnering that online marketing company and I was going through college and you know, I had a couple options, either just make this my career in this online marketing industry or get a degree as kind of a backup, maybe get a CPA as a backup in case things don't work out. And so I went with the second option. You know, most accountants are usually um, risk adverse. So, you know, we take the, the opportunities that we can to, to kind of minimize our risk. And so uh, I, I went really went to college and finished college and got the CPA as uh, an opportunity or some background that I could have that if I ever decide to leave online marketing and not make that my entire career, I had something to fall back on, you know, a career that I could still maintain and continue moving on with. And so it was kind of just born into me. That's, that's the route we, that I was going to go into. I, um, you know, it, it wasn't like I aspired to be an accountant. I didn't have anyone in the family that was an accountant. I didn't have any, you know, close mentors that were accountants or anything like that. Um, it just kind of fell into, I liked, enjoyed the work when I was a business owner and, um, you know, want to pursue that. Again, it was kind of more of a, backup um, you know a, 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 the accounting degree the CPA was something that I could lean on in case I everything anything went wrong in the business that was operating at that time yeah so <clears throat> one of the biggest struggles that I find you know uh, that entrepreneurs and especially new business have is figuring out what exactly it is that they need so the majority I would say probably 90 percent of people who are out there who are listening right now, can are probably nodding their head going, no, I don't like doing my books because <laughs> there's very few people like you and me that love doing it. And I still, to this day, love doing it. I love getting my hands in there. I love the data to stuff. I love data entry. It, it makes me happy. I know <laughs> it's weird, but it does. So when someone is out looking, because I know you're in the States and we're going to get a, to, into a little bit more specifics about stuff that you offer for those of our listeners who are in the US, but when someone's looking um, for a CPA for their business, what are some of the key things that they should be looking for? Yeah, I always talk, you know, that when you're looking at firms, you have kind of a general firm. They're going to service basically anything from manufacturing all the way to a law firm or something like that. Right. Very kind of general. Here's that we service any type of business. Um, and then you also have these specialized firms and specialized firms are what I, we would say is kind of niching down where they say, we know this specific industry very well. And so that's the kind of clients that we want to serve because we can serve them at a much higher level, provide a much better, um, you know, output for them because we're so focused on them. And, you know, if a manufacturer, like, let's say you choose to work with service companies and a manufacturing company comes along, you just would say no to that because you simply cannot 
know every ins and out of manufacturing when all of your experience has been in another type of industry. So when people are looking for firms, I think there's a couple different things that they have to think about. One, does this person specialize or at least have a good understanding about your industry? Uh, when I look at bookkeeping, when I look at tax work, there's a lot of crossover between in industries. So doing a tax return or doing bookkeeping for a law firm might be very similar to that of uh, you know, a pet store. But when you dig, dig deep into it and where they need that support from accountant is helping them grow, helping them analyze their financials. That's where I think that specialized experience you know, can really help play a role to kind of exploit them and take them to that next step. So I think it goes beyond bookkeeping where that specialization really comes in handy. So I always say, you know, when you're looking for an accountant, see if they kind of have a specialty, you know, they niche specifically in your industry or have a really good experience on working in your industry. And the other piece is just having a good connection as far as personalities with them. Um, you know, a lot of people look at their account relationship as a once a year type thing. I see my accountant to file my taxes and that's it. Right. Um, and in a situation like that, you might maybe not have to have personalities meet. But when you're looking at a, you know, a, a new way of doing an account client relationship where you're touching bases more often, you're working with them on an ongoing basis, that personality factor is going to play a big role. You're going to want to make sure that you connect really well with the people that you're going to be working with. And you have the same type of mindset as that type of person. And so I always say, you know, we're a, we're a much more tech you know, we, we utilize technology, everything's in the cloud. We work virtually with all of our clients. Um, so if a client comes to us and they are, they like that face to face where they like to go into their accountant's office and sit there and talk with them and, and really have, you know, shake their hand and have that type of relationship. We're usually not a good fit and we're, we're open to tell people that. And so that's maybe not a personality, but a culture type fit um, saying, you know, you're used, you're running your business in kind of more of the old school, um, way where our business is a little bit more techy. You know, we're going to, we're going to gear towards those people that, you know, want to be able to have a meeting with their client on zoom and, and do a video call and be in and out in a half an hour, no travel time. Those are the type of clients that they say, yes, that's what I want, but it's not for everybody. And so, you know, between, you know, one industry specific to a personality, I think the culture fit too is, is big so that your accounting firm would kind of operate, you know, imagine, when you're looking for an accountant, imagine if that firm moved into your line of business. Would they look and feel the same? Would they run their business the same type of way you would? And I think that's a good indicator that, yeah, that's probably a good fit. So, you know, over and above, making sure that they're reliable and they have good reviews right. and, you know, you have recommendations from them. That's, of course, an important thing. But this would be more in addition to those types of items. And I think one of the things that you said, which is really important is utilizing your accountants fully. And I think a lot of small businesses, especially don't, they do use them just as that one time they see them at the end of the year, hand them in their paperwork, you know, they get told how much they pay and that's it. Mm -hmm. But that there's so much more that they can do for your business to help you to get that growth. Because ideally, we're all in business because we want to grow. We want our business to succeed so that we don't have to work so much. That's the idea mm -hmm. behind it all. Um, so what are some of the ways like for you, you know, and I know it varies, but um, you know, in, in, in depending on the industry, but what are some of the things that, um, that accountants can do to help a company grow? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to be, one, the client open and wanting that type of, type of relationship. So obviously, you know, going from a once a year type relationship to an ongoing where you're working with your accountant more regularly, there's going to be a price factor difference there. So you, right. know, you can't expect to get that level of service without, you know, paying for it or paying for time, whatever it is. Um, but when we look at clients that are kind of looking for that next level and it, we encourage it with all of our clients, we want to be kind of that partner on your team. Look at us as sort of a, within your company, just an outsourced company, you know, right. part of your team. And what that does is it allows us on our end to be kind of that outside looking in type, um, opinion. And so a lot of times when you're solely engulfed in your business, and we see this even myself as a, as a business owner, is that there's a lot of things that may seem obvious to the outside looking in. 
on things that we can improve, things that we can change, cost cutting we can do. Uh, but when you're inside your business and so engulfed in the day to day, it's very hard to see that. And so I think that's the type of relationship you need to be looking for. Someone that's doing your bookkeeping, doing your taxes, that's all handled. But over and above, it's saying, okay, now that we know we have solid financials, how can we use that data to help us in our business? And so it might be cost cutting opportunities. Uh, we had a client where they weren't doing bookkeeping. They were kind of a once a year bookkeeping type client. So they do their bookkeeping right before tax season. <laughs> and we said, why don't you start getting on a more regular basis of doing this bookkeeping? Because one that's going to help you, um, you know, see how your business is performing. It might also open up your eyes on some ways that you can do cost cutting. Uh, so this particular client, we had three years of back bookkeeping that we needed to do. And so when we compiled all that, got everything together, we said, okay, Let's not just use this to file taxes and then forget about it. Let's look at these financials and let's kind of dig into it. Now, there's not much you can do change for stuff that happened three years ago, but it still can be valuable. One thing that we noticed is we said, your software expenses seem a little high. So let's dig into that. We dug into that. There was like two or three subscriptions that they were paying, you know, I think it was like around three to 400 bucks a month uh, on subscriptions that they haven't even touched, used anything. It was a software subscription for over three years. And so that's something, those are things that just can kind of pop out and help you out and say, whoa, like these are software that we're not using, we're still paying for. You know, that's $5,000 a year that they didn't have to spend and now they can cut it. So we're not fixing the past, but we can at least use that data to help us in the future to see where cost cutting opportunities might be. And we see that a lot too on the marketing side. So you put a marketing campaign together in January, you have all those costs in January, you can look at financials and say, how did that improve sales in February or March? Or did it not? Um, you know, if sales went up, did we also have commission expense go up or, you know, related items that, that kind of match those, those sales? And was it worth it? You know, was that, was that marketing campaign we put together, did it give us a positive output in regards to the additional costs that we have? So you did a marketing campaign. Now you have to hire more employees to manage these new business that you might have. Is that profitable? And so it's things like that, that when you're so engulfed, you really can't, you, you can't see this type of stuff. And so it takes some time and a lot of times an outside perspective to come illustrate this for you and say, here's what I'm seeing. Um, and, you know, it might not be relevant in the day to day operations, but here are numbers and numbers typically don't lie. Numbers will give you some pretty good facts. And so using that to just help your business perform better, cost cutting, as well as do we do a campaign like this in the future? And if so, here's the type of output that we can expect from it. And I think that that's true that we tend to ignore how important the numbers are because there's no, and that was one of the things I loved about, of, of why I got into the industry myself was that I loved pushing buttons. I just <laughs> loved calculators. They just made yep. me happy. They still do to this day. So it was either accounting or cashier. And I just thought there was probably a little bit more money in accounting. Yeah, um, I think you probably took a better route. There. I took a little bit of the better route, but you know, that my backup plan is the cashier. My dad always said, if you fail at anything, you're still living a dream because you know, that was, that was, that was my dream job. Oh, to be a cashier. That was my dream <laughs> job when I was about five. So, um, so I'm glad I'm, I am glad I went the other route, but that I think a lot of businesses, um, they don't, they don't know how to look at their numbers and, and, you know, it, it's frightening because you get these reports and I know like I've had so many clients over the year, they get these profit and loss reports and balance sheets. And they're like, I don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know how to begin to read it, but the numbers have no emotion. Like you were saying, you know, your numbers for your business, they don't have that added emotion that you have inside of your doors. And I think that that's where a lot of the um, decisions can be decided from because there isn't that emotion evolved, which is hard when you're a business owner, especially when you're a small business, because everything you have is invested into that. And, you know, and then doing those numbers, like you were saying, actually inputting and not leaving it, hopefully you're, you're all, everybody who's listening is not leaving it for three years because that's a bad <laughs> idea, but um, not leaving it until the end of the year to do it. So with that being said, though, now we're looking into like bookkeeping um, and accounting. And I know that that's a really gray area for a lot of people. So can you kind of demystify a little bit the difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant? 
Yeah. And I think you kind of touched a point right there is that when you do your bookkeeping, what does that produce? It produces financials. And so financials are extremely useful, but if you don't know what to do with them, they're not very useful. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a lot of times you'll get uh, financials from a bookkeeper and it's just like, Oh, this is great. And, and, and throw it to the side where that accountant can come in. And, and I, and I use that term loosely. I think a bookkeeper can play the role of an accountant, but when we're looking at accounting versus bookkeeping, bookkeeping is the hard coding. Here's what, here's your financials. Here's how your business, you know, here's the hard numbers. What, when you look at accounting, um, I, that's where you're digging into those numbers and saying, okay, now we have the data. What are we going to do about it? Uh, let's look at sales. Let's see trends that we see. Let's compare to prior years. Let's compare to prior quarters or prior months and see how things are going up or down. And let's see if there's anything that catches our eye. And so I think that's really the accounting piece is digging deep into, you got the numbers from the bookkeeping work. Now let's dig into that and see how we can use, utilize this information to help your business grow, reduce costs, whatever it might be. So I, I think that's a key factor that you, you mentioned is that, you know, just having financials isn't very helpful for a business owner. And I think that's important that they reach out to their accountants to dive into them, say, okay, financials are great. Let's, can we walk through them? Can you help me understand what this even means? You know, what, what is a balance sheet versus income statement? And I'm paying a loan, but that's not showing up on the income statement. Why is that? These are things where an accountant can come in and, and really kind of uh, assist you with that, with that area. But again, I say, a bookkeeper can be an accountant, I think, um, but it's it's more of the role of the task. So bookkeeping is what I look at as just hard financials, hard coding, accurate financials, that accounting is really taking those financials and then doing something with it. And for business owners out there, this is another um, question that I get asked a lot. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask it because I'm sure there's ones that are out there. Um, when you have somebody um, like yourself who is doing the books for the business, how important do you find it is for them to also do your personal stuff and how that goes hand in hand? Because I know that's a question. A lot of people go, oh, I just do my personal stuff by myself. Like I buy a program and I do it. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about that, you know, how that goes hand in hand too? from an accountant perspective? Yeah, I, I think that's important because, you know, a lot of times, let's say you have a business that is doing really well. And so you're seeing all this money come through and you're like, well, okay, and that's, let's go spend it. Um, where you, you're operating your personal life, um, you know, just based on how your business performs. And I think that's important that you separate the two, operate your personal as a business. And so you can have financial statements on your personal side and income statement of sort in a balance sheet that shows what are your liabilities, what's your debts like. And I think you need to take that information and analyze it just as you would a business. So our debt's really high. We have good cash flow right now. Does that mean that we just spend that cash flow on expenses? Or should we turn some of that into our assets, you know, pay off some of our house or buy a new house or, you know, pay off some of our debt, whatever it might be. Um, so with business owners, you typically see that where their personal finances can oftentimes be a mess. And that not only affects obviously your personal life and if things are rough and you know, you're, you're struggling personally, but your business is doing well they're not aligned very well. And that can be a motivation you know, factor when you're a business owner, it can be stressful. Um, so I think that it's, it's important to have both of them aligned and running both of them as you would like a normal business, because that's going to give you, um, you know, that, that ease of mind. So that, that ability to say, okay, I know how I'm doing personally. I feel comfortable here. Let's go to the business. I'm coming into the business with a clear mind, uh, knowing that, you know, things aren't a mess over here because I, I'm, I'm structured on both ends. And so I, I think that is important. And a lot of times with business owners, like I said, it's, it's something where their financials are up and down. Businesses grow, businesses, you know, stabilize, businesses go down and then they grow even more when they come back up. Um, but it doesn't mean that your personal finances have to follow that same chain. As long as you have that kind of happy medium on your personal side, I really think that that can help you as a business owner really you know, help your business grow because you, you feel comfortable, you feel satisfied on your personal side and not just spending money because the business is making money. 
And I think that's too where um, having an accountant that is working with you more than just at at tax time helps you as well, because there's so many different ways that business owners take money from the company and which way is best, you know, whether that are you taking dividends, are you on payroll? Like that's something that I think is just like shooting fish in a barrel. Sometimes people go, I don't know, I just take money when there is money Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of thing. So um, do you feel that having that relationship with your accountant is important because they can kind of see the larger picture when they're doing both your business and your personal and sort of say, here's where I think that you guys, you know, should be, whether that be on payroll or dividends or, and really being able to explain that to them? Yeah. And that's the biggest thing, the understanding of that. So, you know, we, we get a lot of times where clients aren't doing their bookkeeping, they come to us for taxes and they say, well, i you know, I have no money in my bank. So it was a very down year. You know, I have a thousand dollars left in my bank and we do their financials and we're saying, well, you took draws of a hundred thousand dollars, which are not expenses. And so your business actually profited a hundred thousand dollars. Now you get this big tax bill. Right. And so they're like, whoa, but I didn't make any money. Look at my bank account. And so <laughs> that's that kind of interaction that you need to have with your account is understanding how that works. Because when you're a business owner, you don't have that kind of big brother that's taking taxes out, managing that all for you. You're in control of that. And so especially for new business owners, we see this all the time, that first year of being a business owner, it can be a little bit of a shock because you're not used to that. You're used to taxes being taken out of your paycheck. You get a refund, you get you have to pay in a little bit at the end of the year. It's no big deal, no big surprises. Now you're a business owner and things get you know, there, there's much more surprises coming to you. So I think that that comes with experience. You know, new business owners oftentimes have a big surprise that first year, and then they're just working to kind of pay back that debt the next couple of years, you know, the tax debt, but now they know. Um, working with an accountant on a regular basis is something that we always encourage our clients to do because we can give you insights throughout the year and say, you know, here's how your business is performing after quarter one. Here are tax estimates that we recommend after quarter one, after quarter two, do the same thing. And so there is no surprises. Now we could say your tax bill right now is $10,000. You can choose to pay that or not pay that. That's totally up to you, but at least you know kind of where you're at so that if tax day ended today, you knew, okay, I have to have $10,000 of my savings to pay my taxes. And so that ongoing relationship is something that I think you don't see too often with accountants. Um, most people don't have that regular relationship with accountants and I think it can really hurt them. And, you know, that's why I, when we talk about finding the right accountant, a lot of accountants charge by the hour. That's kind of the old, what I call the old school way of doing accounting. Yeah. I remember going to school and that was it. Like that's literally what we were taught. Like you hit a clock when yep. you start and you tap it when you're done. Like it was like every minute was accounted for. And that's tough like that. because, you know, you, <laughs> You know that every time you reach out to your account, you send them an email, you jump on a phone call with them, you do anything, you're on the clock and you're not necessarily getting value for that, the, the amount that you're paying. So you'll have an hour meeting with, a, with an accountant. If, it, if you're doing hourly price and you have an hour meeting with an accountant, you might have one meeting where you got thousands of dollars in value from it. In every other meeting, you get absolutely really no value from it. It's just trying to cover your bases. And so that's where the hourly thing I think can be sometimes of a problem because you're, you're preventing yourself from reaching out to the accountant when you need help. And so when we talked about trying to find the right accountant, if you're looking for, to have that relationship where you're working with them ongoing, they're kind of your partner on the team. They're your guiding force. You're going to want a relationship where it's a flat monthly fee. There's no hourly fees or at least a, a ranging fees. So you kind of know where you are. You're not afraid to call them. Uh, because once you get into that phase where you're afraid to call a professional that you need help on, but you don't want to necessarily pay for it or don't understand what you're paying for, you're going to push it off. And now next thing you know, you're going to have a big surprise and say, man, I should have just called them. There was something that we could have implemented throughout the year on a hour of phone call that I was just afraid to do because I didn't know what the charge was going to be, how long it was going to be and, and things or what I even maybe needed. Um, right. And so, you know, having that, Constant communication with your accountant, I think, is is important for all business owners. So tell us a little bit too, um, because I know this is probably coming up because we're, you know, pretty much everywhere is coming up to tax time. We're getting into the the thick of it. So tell us the difference between tax pre- tax preparation and tax planning. Yeah, so I, I look at tax preparation as really just taking information, how your business performed throughout the year, 
and submitting that to the government. It's just taking information and sending it to the government. There's no kind of fancy things around tax preparation or anything like that. Sometimes it can be complicated, uh, but overall it's just filing information with the state agencies. Tax planning is saying, okay, this is where you're currently at. What are strategies that we can implement throughout the year to help save you on taxes? For most business owners, taxes are gonna be one of their biggest expenses. And so when we look at tax planning, this is where most of our focus is. We do prepare and file, of course, but we say our focus is on tax planning. How can we minimize your tax bill throughout the year? Because when, we, when it comes to tax time, there's not a ton of strategies left. The year's over, your books yeah. are closed. There's some strategies available, but most of the strategies need to be implemented before the year's over. And that's where the tax planning key is piece. And so a lot of times we, we talk to clients, we say, when, the, when you're looking to grow your business, there's two things that you can do. You can have financial offense, which is having more sales, putting a marketing campaign together, growing your business that way. But you can also put more money in your pocket using financial defense, and that's spending less money. And with most clients, uh, the, their biggest expense coming from taxes, it makes sense that when we focus on that financial defense piece, that we should focus on taxes. And then how can we minimize and lower your tax liability because tax planning is ways that you can guarantee a lower tax bill. So you can, if we look at financial offense, we can put a marketing campaign together and grow sales, but there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Right. But on the opposite side, we can implement a tax strategy. We can hire your kids, implement a retirement plan, whatever it is. And we can say, by doing this, we are guaranteeing you you save X amount in taxes. And so that's the key thing when we, when we look at ways to put more money in your pocket and we look specifically at the financial defense piece, we want to say, let's, let's change our focus to taxes. So how can we minimize taxes? So again, tax planning is lowering your taxes, working with you throughout the year, implementing these strategies um, throughout the year where tax planning or tax preparation is, okay, year's done. We implemented all those strategies. Now we're just taking information send it to the IRS or state agencies, government agencies. And that's the disconnect that most people have. Most people look at an accountant for tax preparation and that's all yeah. they do with them. And I think that you're right, that that's, that's a key thing that people aren't using them to their fullest potential for their business, but to also, for also the understanding, because it's not, I mean, it's the most convoluted, I don't care where you are. I don't think any government agency makes it understandable. Um, you know, I, I mean, I was in school for four years and there's still some stuff that I'm like, what? You know, yeah. it's, it's the, the, you know, it's, it's just, just written to almost make you not be able to understand. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we've, you know, we've talked a lot about on the show too, um, in past episodes about build, really building your team and having those people that can help take you forward. And, and I really do believe not just because I am in the industry, but I do believe that having a proper accountant on your team is so crucial to your business growing because it is hard to understand and that's what they love to do. So if you have somebody who loves to do something, let them do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's not that if they're working with an accountant that might be that once a year relationship, it's not saying that, that that's a bad accountant or anything like that. That's no. traditionally how accountants are trained to work. Most accounting firms that you're working with are, we'll see you during tax time and then we'll see you again next year. And that's just the tr traditional way of doing things. And so uh, I think that there's a lot of firms out there that flip that upside down and say, let's change the traditional way of doing things into a modern way of doing things. And that's where we're focusing on having that relationship, being a partner for our clients, doing tax planning and having that ongoing work with clients. So it's just kind of, you know, I always tell clients, you know, clients will say, you know, this is great. You know, being able to implement these strategies, being on top of things throughout the year is great. I wish I had this at my old company or with my old accountant. And I, yeah, I always caution them and say, your old accountant probably did an amazing job at that one thing that he did. And he just didn't realize this extra level of service that you maybe needed. And yeah. so I always encourage clients that too. Be open with your accountant. Tell them your expectations because if you're expecting one thing but getting the other, that means that there's just a communication disconnect. It just takes the time to say, hey, this is what I'm looking for, what I would really like. Do you offer that? Because a lot of times, you know, accountants don't like to sell. 
the accountants yeah. don't like to sell themselves. They don't like to sell things to clients. They want to make things as cheap as possible in every way they can do it. And so they're going to say, here's your price. Now they, that price could be for, you know, 10 services and there might be five services that may, they're just an additional charge, but the accountant just doesn't tell the client that those are available because they want to keep costs low. They don't want to scare them away. And so I always tell clients, be open with your accountant, tell them what your expectations are, tell them what you're looking for exactly. And make sure that you're getting into that relationship because you might move accountants when you don't even need to do that. You might have an accountant that can provide that service for you. You just never let them know that that's what you were looking for. Yeah. And I think that people have that, you know, there's always that really weird dynamic. It's almost like when people go to a doctor, you know, and they're like, well, this is wrong. And the doctor says, well, I think this is what it is. And they're like, no, the pain's not in my knee. And then all of a sudden they're getting x-rays for their knee, but they're sitting there going, really wasn't in my knee, you know? And I find that they, that, that, that sort of stigmatism is around accountants too, where they feel like they can't ask. So they don't. And so I love that you said, like, just be open with them and say, like, I think it's okay to say, I don't understand what this sheet is saying. I don't understand what an income statement is. I don't understand what a balance sheet is. Can you help me understand this? Instead of just getting it and going, well, it's a positive at the bottom, (laughs) right? Like, I think it's okay to ask those questions. I think it's important for you to understand, not that you need to, you know, all run out and go and get degrees in accounting, but to, you know, it's okay to say, I need help understanding this because I don't know. Yeah. And I think that's a great analogy that you use there too. Um, But, you know, as an accountant too, you know, I'll, I'll say on our side is that, there are, we can dig down into financials and explain them, you know, very deeply on a very low level, you know, kind of dumb them down a little bit. Um, but we don't know what that client's level of understanding is either. And so I think that's where that communication piece is big so that we know, okay, you know, we might have to explain these financials a little bit more for you than we would for someone that maybe has a finance background and knows what these are or vice versa. You have a finance background. So if I'm, kind of saying these things that you just are like, yeah, I get it. I'm not even listening to any word you're saying. Right. Also come out and say that and say, hey, you don't need to go into this level of detail. I understand what these financials are. And, and that's just a communication piece, you know, making sure that you have close communications and feel comfortable requesting things and feel comfortable expressing, you know, additional services you might want or a change in the way your services are being provided. So, I know that there's probably a lot of people that are sitting there right now and thinking, okay, I want to work with this guy because, you know, we do have, we do have that stigma that um, all accountants are sort of boring (laughs) and we're not all boring (laughs) and you have proven that. So thank you very much, Mike, (laughs) for helping with that. But how can people get a hold of you and your firm? Where's the best way for them to find them to learn more about the services that you offer and how they can work with you? Yeah, so we're we're pretty visible all over the internet. If you go to any kind of social media site and type in Jetro, uh, J E T R O, or Jetro and Associates, you can pretty much find us on any social media platform. Um, you can go directly to our website too at, at JetroTax.com, and that's uh, J E T R O Tax.com. So social media um, or, or find us directly on our website. We also have a podcast where we do tax tips. They're very short episodes, but it's just kind of one tax tip. And this would be more for probably that U.S. base, Um, but small business tax savings podcast. Um, So that's another place that you can find us if you're looking for some of those kind of uh, short tips and tricks on tax strategies you can implement to help save on taxes. And I think there's a lot, you know, I'm, I know you're in the US and I'm in Canada, but I did listen to a couple of episodes and I think it's good for people to listen to, even if they're not in the States, because I think it just, um, it really st- spurs some questions in your head that then you can go to your local accountant and say, hey, does this apply to us or what is the equivalent for us? So I think you have a lot of really good tips there too. So we're going to make sure that we link to everywhere that they can find you. Um, and so if you had one piece of advice to give a business owner, I would say the majority of my listeners have been in business for a while. So what's the one piece of advice that you'd like to leave our listeners with today? It really comes down to, um, the one thing that's tough as a business owner is trust in other people. So you're running your business, all of a sudden you're seeing some growth and you're working more and more hours because you don't want to bring someone on or so you bring someone on and it never works out. And so my my biggest point is saying, trust other people. When you bring someone on to take over some of those tasks that you're doing, 
don't expect them to be a replica of you. That's both a good thing and a bad thing. If they were a replica of you, that's good because everything is going to perform the same, but it's also it means they bring no ideas, new ideas to the table, new ways to do things to the table. And so never expect someone to be a replica of you. Uh, someone once told me that if you expect you bring on an employee, expect them to perform at about 75% of the level that you're performing. And I think that that mindset, if you have that mindset coming in, you're going to be able to trust other employees a lot more because um, you, you're not going to be looking at every email that gets sent and say, did they answer this the way I would have? Or did they talk to this client the way I would have? Because they never will. And you will never be happy if that's your expectations. And you're always going to be doing more work. You're going to have more hours and you're going to hate your business. And so having that ability to just trust others, and that's going to lead your business to even more growth. Uh, it's going to give you a better lifestyle because you're not working so many hours. You're not so stressed because you have a team around you to help support you. So trusting others and kind of building that team around you. I think that I love that you said that because I think that's so true. And it's a, it was a hard lesson for me too, because I experienced that. Um, a little bit of a problem of being a control freak. But mm -hmm. so, and sometimes I think it's true. It's hard for us to let go. But I think once I did, I realized that other people have really great ideas. And I found that I was able to grow my team better when I allowed people to perform their specialty. Yep. Um, because I think everybody has a special little niche, but if we try to sort of pigeon them whole into what we want them, we miss that. And, you know, I think, I think it's great. What you said is allowing everybody to sort of, um, experiment with their own expertise, because that helps you not only with retention, but it also helps your business to grow because like you said, new ideas are coming in. Yeah, exactly. And, and I don't think I could work with somebody who's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I know you think it'd be good, but it, I think it would be good, but I'm thinking, no, I don't think that would be good at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's just, it's just being able to, um, but by, by trusting other people, having a team, a good team around you, it's not to say that, you know, you're going to have some employees that just don't work out. They're just not fit for your type of business. And so right. it's not saying that every employee, if you need to fire them or things aren't working out, that that means it's, it's on you for not trusting them. Uh, but just knowing that, Hey, they're going to have, they're going to do things a little bit differently. They're going to bring some extra expertise to the table. They're going to bring ideas that you wouldn't have thought of to the table and to just trust them and not expect them to be replicas of you. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and helping me to break down the stigmatism that not all accountants are stuffy. Hey, <laughs> that we, we do try. have personalities. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, I've met some stuffy accounts. So I, I get where people are coming from, but uh, all we can do is try on our end. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much. We're going to make sure we link to everywhere um, that you can find out more about Mike and his company. And, uh, and definitely if you're in the States and that's something that you're interested in and how you can work with them. So thank you so much. And I look forward to having you back on the show again. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks for the time. Understanding how your money is working for or against your business is really important, but that sometimes is a business owner's last thing that they want to do and not their expertise. And that's okay, because that's why there's accountants and bookkeepers out there who love doing it. So if it's not something that you enjoy doing, find somebody who has passion with it and let them help you to lead the way. And if you are getting statements from your accountant or your bookkeeper and you don't understand what they mean, remember to have a conversation with them and ask. As I always say, the only stupid question is one that you never ask. And have a conversation with them about the features and benefits that they offer because maybe you're not fully taking advantage of what you're paying for. So it's always good to have that reminder. Think about your cell phone plan. How many features do you have on your phone that you don't even use? I know for myself, I always forget that I have call forwarding. I pay for the feature, but I always forget to use it. So your accountant is the same thing. Make sure that you're using them to their full potential. And that might be simply, like Mike said, sitting down and having a conversation to see if there's any areas that they feel you should be using or any services that they have that they think might be beneficial to you. And no matter what you're doing, whether you enjoy accounting like I do, whether you enjoy pushing buttons like I do, find a way to have fun. Because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?